Well, we're back today on Due to Bides with the Roseberry Express for now. Uh, we haven't come up with any other names for it in the meantime. That's just kind of what it's what I've come up with for now. But anyways, we're back with the good old fashioned just bone stock MTD. Uh, what we're going to do to this thing is uh, today's foot throttle day. Yesterday I went ahead and I welded on a little fart canny little muffler off of another engine that was blown up. Uh, that way this thing just kind of runs quiet. It was running straight pipe and it was pretty loud and shooting flames. Now it won't be doing that. And it doesn't hit, I'll show you. Uh, it basically sits where a stock muffler would be. Just not quite as big and bulky. And uh, I think it'll be fine. It runs good. And uh, so anyways, now we're going to mod the foot throttle on here. Just to give uh, the old lady a little more control over her machine. Uh, when we're out doing a little romping uh, on the weekends. You know, we had the kids with us. And sometimes it's not easy to ride these babies and balance a kid on a leg and hit obstacles. And you just, you don't. At the property folks doing a little mud mowing you don't have the control you need having to take a hand off the wheel and run this throttle so we're going to see if we can't rig it to where you still can use this hand throttle as a throttle that runs uh the carburetor as well as a foot throttle let me show you what i've got all right, so let me show you what we got. We got us, here's the uh, the foot throttle that I'm going to use. It's a brake lever off a bicycle. Pretty common practice in the mud mower world. Uh, yep, picked up a couple of bicycles real cheap from the Habitat for Humanity. We went ahead and chopped off a piece of the handlebar. And we're going to go ahead and uh, mod it on here, something like this. Maybe at a slight angle. Uh, that way our pedal and whatnot, you know, you get the gist of it, will kind of sit at the proper angle for your foot to just naturally want to kind of rest almost on the pedal. And it's the perfect length of cable and I like this little 90 degree elbow or whatever you want to call it. Maybe it's not quite 90, but you know, it's a good little elbow piece and it angles it just right at the uh, governor arm is what I usually do. There's a governor arm coming out of the uh, side of the engine there. I'll show you here in a minute. And I just kind of rig this around the arm with a little cable clamp. That way, once you've got the tractor running, uh, and the tension's on the governor arm, you can just give this baby a little bop. I also bought a couple of springs just to kind of help the throttle return because I know that the stock uh, governor spring on there it's not going to be enough to override the frictional force inside that sheathing there and bring the pedal back to the return so we'll uh, see what we can get going uh, yes I know it's not good to override the governor so I wouldn't advise it anybody who does this to their tractor there's plenty of videos out there probably on how to do this so I'm going to do it, but I warn you, like everybody else would warn you, if you do this to your tractor, you're overriding the governor. There's a good chance you can blow stuff up when you give it too much beans or onion, where I'm from. <coughs> so, yeah, we're going to make it so that we can go past that 3,600 RPM limit. And, uh, you know, we'll be able to give her the onion. And uh, it'll be good for you. And it'll be good for everybody else involved. So stick around and I'll try to show you how it's done. All right. So here's the other side of the tractor. Uh, there's your carb. And I've got a choke cable individually hooked up to run the choke separately. Uh, here's that governor arm that I was telling you about. It just kind of... Uh, goes back and forth there like that and you can see it's pretty loose and floppy and that's what you want on a stock 
setup, but we're going to be rigging the cable to come around and hook to that. And normally what I do is I just loop it around here and put a little cable clamp somewhere on here so that it stays clamped around this arm. And then what you do is, uh, what you do is you get your throttle positioned just right so that when you give her full throttle, it pulls all the way back on this arm. So when you set your position, you want this arm to be as far forward as it can be. And that's what I bought those extra springs for is I might need to create a little more forward tension on this uh, for, to return my throttle pedal back to its resting state. And so uh, the downside is, is yeah, your governor doesn't work like it's supposed to, but that governor arm pushes on the throttle linkage that runs the carburetor and gives it wide open throttle. So you can kind of just judge if you're not an idiot, you can kind of just get the feel for like when your engine's about to rattle apart and you just kind of try to stay away from that RPM zone if you can. You know, sometimes you're stuck. I've been there. I've blown a few engines, so I, I get it. But uh, yeah, we're going to bring the cable around the back of the engine here. There's plenty of room to bring the cable around and I might even be able to, to mount it, uh, you know, to like right here where this little bolt is here is a good spot to bring that 90 around hook her right to there or, you know even to like something right there I don't know we'll see how it comes out but we'll we got to grind that little metal post down so that it's at the right angle and get that pedal mounted up first before we figure out how we're going to rig up that linkage so uh, I'll try to show you what that looks like once we get that done I think what I'm gonna do as I showed you I'm gonna use this hole here and I'm gonna get this at a nice angle I'm gonna go grind it but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld a washer over the end of that or maybe even a nut maybe I'll weld a nut in there I can find a nut and a washer and weld it on there and I'll find a bolt that way I can just bolt this on right here and take it on and off as I need just that much better and that way I don't have to grind paint off of this uh, you know foot rest here and just cause more chance for rust to get in and destroy the beautiful paint on this machine so anyways I uh, appreciate you sticking around let's show you what we got going on all right, folks, so mission complete. We have a throttle pedal installed. It's a brake, brake lever, as you can see. I just uh, welded a bolt to the bottom of that so that I could put a nut on it and pull it off whenever I want or angle it for my comfort. And so I know it looks a little cockeyed, but that is what is comfortable to the foot. So, and then we ran it up through this little hole here, around behind the gas tank. And then I installed a little uh, holder there. I don't know if you can see that, where that bolt is there. There's a little cable hold down that holds our cable running. Let me come around to the other side. Comes around and hooks to our governor arm, like I was telling you. And uh, we bent that choke linkage. We don't use that choke linkage, so I just kind of bent it out of the way. There, put a heavier duty return spring in there. And uh, yeah, she does throttle things. We'll fire it up so you can hear it. Oh, here's the muffler we put on there. Nice, simple little guy. But he gets the job done. He fires right up.
thing's way faster now too. Now that we can override that 3600 RPMs, this is the fastest tractor in the fleet. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, a little thing I forgot to point out is I I cut off the uh, deck handle. I could have unbolted it, but it's kind of connected to a rod that goes all the way across the body. And I feel like that rod kind of helps give the body a little bit of structural rigidity. So I left it in there and I just cut the handle off and I put that cap in there so it doesn't just fill up with water and rust. Plus, I haven't disengaged or bypassed the safety mechanism for the, day, the, the deck engagement so the mower won't start if the handle was down. So another reason I cut it off because it's in the way of where your foot needs to be your leg you don't want to be bashing your leg against it so that's the Roseberry Express in a nutshell folks she's uh, all done and I'll have to give you a little taste of a speed run when uh, we get her back home so stick around all right so here we are we're home we got the foot throttle on the Roseberry Express, and uh, I'm going to show you a little speed run, uh, test run, uh, to show you what a difference it makes just being able to go that couple hundred RPMs more than a stock uh, throttle setup would allow you. So, hang tight. Clocked this thing at about 11 miles an hour max speed. Maybe could have pushed it to 12, but 11 is decent for stock, I would say. You know, nothing done to the belts, nothing done to the pulleys. Just that couple hundred more RPM really gets you that much further. So, you know, just keep in mind that we're overriding the governor, like I warned you about earlier in the video. So, yeah, don't blow up your engine, folks. It's not fun to rebuild them or have to find another one. So, anyways, thanks for watching Dude Bites. Well, we made it a bit further than the MTD did on its maiden voyage in the creek, but that's to be expected. This is locked rear diff. We're still bogged.